What's up my comic comrades? Today we finally jump back into the main Batman title being written by James Tynan. We last talked about the Batman title back in November with issues 101 and 102, which was dealing with the fallout of the Joker War and introduced a character from Bruce's teenage years called the Ghost Maker, who has made his way to Gotham to do what Batman hasn't done, eliminate all crimes. So today we're finally picking up where we left off, covering issues 103 through 105. Yes, we know we're late to covering these issues and story arcs, but that's because there's been so much to cover lately. Like all the Marvel Disney Plus shows, the Snyder Cut, the new Invincible animated series, the countless other massive event books like Death Metal, Infinite Frontier, King in Black, and the list goes on. But hey, it's a good problem to have. In any case, let's finally talk about my favorite character, the Batman. Last we left off in issue 102, where Batman is squaring off against the Ghost Maker, saving the life of the Clown Hunter. With that said, issue 103 opens up with Bruce Wayne many years ago, sitting in the Gobi Desert. Then on the next page, we see he's greeted by the Ghost Maker, who's wanting to spar with Bruce. But Bruce is saying, not tonight, come back in the morning. I'll fight you then. Ghost Maker then puts his swords in the sand while sitting next to Bruce saying, this isn't like you. Bruce then tells him, you almost sound concerned. Ghostmaker tells him, I don't feel things like that. I'm just irritated and inconvenienced. I learned three new forms of martial arts and I wanted to try to break a few of your bones before I found a new teacher. Bruce then tells Ghostmaker, today's the anniversary, the day my parents died, just leave. I'm training out here. Ghostmaker says, no, you're brooding. That doesn't count. He then tells Bruce as they're sitting there in the desert night, I'm sorry, Bruce. Bruce replies, I thought you didn't feel things like that. Ghostmaker tells him, that's not the kind of sorry I am. You're gonna fail. It might not happen right away or all at once, but you're gonna fail because you're letting your emotions make you vulnerable. Caring makes you weak. And with that, Bruce picks up one of the swords saying, no, it doesn't. Let me prove it to you as we're brought back to the present. We then see Batman fighting Ghostmaker in Gotham as Batman is fighting Ghostmaker, preventing him from killing the Clown Hunter. Oracle then starts talking to Batman saying, I don't understand what's happening, Batman. I can't see whoever you're fighting from any angle. And his voice is distorted. Batman tells her, you won't get him on record. You won't find his name on any international database. You need to stop trying to look him up. If you brush up against his ghost net, his computers will eat yours alive. Oracle then asks, who the hell is this person? He tells her he's a ghost maker and he's not supposed to be here as the two continue to fight. As the two continue to fight, Ghostmaker says, Batman, you used to make fun of my name and said that you didn't need a mask or pseudonym to fight crime in Gotham. How long did it take you to start calling yourself Batman once you hit the streets? A week? A night? Batman, he's a man dressed like a bat. Very, very clever. You've won up me again. Oracle says, what is he saying? This is driving me nuts that I can't hear anything. Batman tells her, he's still upset that I made fun of him when he was 15 years old. And he's even more upset that I've beaten him every time we've gone head to head since I've turned 20. So as we know by now by this issue and the two previous issues, Batman and the Ghostmaker have a past together. They actually trained together in their younger years, but that gets more elaborated on in the next issue. So let's continue. Anyway, after Batman smashes Ghostmaker's head into the side of a wall, Ghostmaker tells him, do you want to know what I've done today? I've only been in Gotham for 12 hours. I thought I'd ease into it, but there was too much work to do. I leaked the criminal activities to 14 different district judges to the Gotham Gazette. Your inept police already are taking them into custody. I solved the string of homicides the same police hadn't linked together. The killer was clever enough to not try a gimmick or put on a costume. The van is already en route to Arkham. I also sent the FBI the location of six incoming shipments of heavy artillery from Santa Prisca. That was all before I left the plane, Bruce. And you're busy protecting children like this clown hunter who've already been twisted into killers. You've always had a soft spot there. I don't have soft spots as Ghostmaker grabs his sword to kill Clown Hunter, but Batman stops him allowing Clown Hunter to get away. Ghostmaker then tells Batman, I don't care much about this kid, Batman. It's more of what he represents. It's the same fight we've been having for years. This is all too personal to you. You care too much to save the city. You're failing, Bruce, and I need to shock you into seeing that. That's the only thing you've ever really processed trauma. So I'm going to kill this kid in front of you so you get a clear enough head to see how bad of a job you're doing. Batman then just looks at him saying, you're a psychopath. Ghostmaker replies, that's exactly why I'm better than you. Elsewhere, we see Harley Quinn in her new apartment talking to a poison ivy plant that she found in Robinson Park. She's talking to it as though it's poison ivy herself in hopes that somehow poison ivy can hear her through it even though she was killed in the Heroes in Crisis story. She continues talking to this plant as though it's poison ivy, telling her she wants to make up for the sins of her past, becoming one of the good guys. She says, I'm no goody two shoes and I'm not gonna save the world or something, but I do think maybe I could do better. And she's already started by saving Batman and shooting the Joker in the head. So again, I use the term good guy very loosely. She's becoming like an anti-hero, it seems. A path Harley has been going down for a long while now. Anyway, if you wanna see how she saved Batman and shot the Joker in the head, Check out our videos on the Joker War right here. As she continues to talk to the plant, we see the clown hunter arrive in her apartment ready to kill her. He swings his bat at her, but of course, she dodges. But Harley is Harley, meaning she likes to talk. So as he's trying to kill her, she's making fun of his costume and saying how he smells like a dirty teenager who needs to use deodorant. She even tells him, you're a funny kid, I'm starting to like you. He then says, stop playing with me. She then says to him, I'm pretty used to people trying to kill me. The novelty of the whole thing is worn off. Now I'd kill you myself, 
but I'm trying to be one of the good guys these days, and I don't think that's gonna fly with old pointy ears. This pisses the clown hunter off as he starts saying, you think you could be one of the good guys? How many people have you killed? How many more did you watch the Joker kill? At which point she knees him in the crotch saying, in my professional experience, the only people who keep track of how many they've killed are completely nuts and not in a fun way. But I try not to live in the past. I'm all about finding my potential and my future is looking shiny and bright. Shortly after this, Batman comes crashing through Harley's apartment window as she's tying the clown hunter up. She says, hey bats, don't be mad. I didn't kill him or anything. I'm tying him up like you hero types do. We can toss him over to the pigs so he can get tormented by our city's broken justice system. See, I'm picking up on this hero thing fast. I'm also picking up you've been stabbed, at which point Ghostmaker also comes through her window looking for Batman. Harley says to Ghostmaker, so you're an assassin or something? He tells her, I'm not an assassin. I'm a crime fighter. I'm called the Ghostmaker. At which point Batman starts to get up saying that serial killer's name is Denton Quill. He then says to Ghostmaker, I've had a member of my family tracking him for two weeks, waiting for him to reveal where he stores his trophies so we could pin every homicide on him. Those families will now have to live with hearsay. We'll never know how many victims he had. Ghostmaker says, that's an excuse. You shouldn't have let him stay on the street. Batman then says the judges were under the thumb of an international mob boss named Tiger Shark. You just destroyed a Rico case that would have put a master criminal away for life. Ghostmaker then says, now you're lying. Batman then continues to say, I replaced the ammunition for the weapons from Santa Prisca six days ago with faulty shells and was waiting to take down their buyers here in Gotham. Proving to Ghostmaker and us the audience that Batman is always 10 steps ahead of everyone at any given time. So Ghostmaker clearly jumped the gun on all those cases as Batman had it under control. But Ghostmaker doesn't care. He's still trying to make the point to Batman that he lets his emotions get the best of him and in the way of his work. So he shoots Batman, Harley, and Clown Hunter with sleeping darts saying, I'm taking you off the field, Bruce and then I'm gonna show you what Gotham City can be with a real crime fighter in charge. This brings us to issue 104. Here we see Ghostmaker has brought Batman, Harley, and Clown Hunter to an abandoned room in Arkham Asylum, where he's tied them down on operating tables. And when Batman wakes up, Ghostmaker tells him that boy, Clown Hunter, is just the latest symptom of your disease. If you looked at the numbers plain, you'd see my method is right. I'm going to show you a better way. I've brought you to the one place in Gotham you really belong, which of course is Arkham. Meanwhile, Barbara Gordon, AKA Oracle, radios into Nightwing. And Dick tells her, I'm coming back tonight. She goes, Dick, that's not why I called. He says, I know, but I'm still coming back. Tell me everything. She says, Batman's been out of commission for six hours now. And there's been things happening all over the city. Five hours ago, the leader of 14 of the city's most dangerous gangs turned themselves into GCPD with bruises and broken bones. Professor Pig was found in his old cell in Arkham, despite having been at large for the last eight months. Then six were found dead at the Iceberg Lounge with sword wounds. My sources tell me that Penguin is in one of his underground bunkers. Nightwing says, I can't believe Ghostmaker actually came to Gotham. Oracle tells him, I can't believe you know about him and I don't. I've been trying to get a glimpse of him all night. She then asks, what's happening here? Who is the Ghostmaker? Nightwing tells her, I've never met him. I've only seen him once. He then tells her about the time him and Batman were in the Batwing chasing some criminal who's on the level of the Penny Blunderer. A nuisance with a gimmick who stirs up trouble every now and then. We got word they were fleeing the country en route to Singapore. We decided to beat him there. I remember it was raining when we landed in a private airstrip by one of Wayne Enterprise's international subsidiaries. And there was a figure waiting for us in the rain. Batman went to talk to him before coming back inside of the Batwing, telling me we're going back to Gotham. Dick then says, I don't understand. We're letting the bad guy go because of some weirdo with a couple of swords. Batman then says, Ghostmaker will finish the job and see that he's extradited back to Gotham. Dick then just says, Batman? At which point Bruce punches the center console, breaking it. Dick then asks, why are you so upset? Who was that man? Batman says, probably the most selfish, arrogant person I've ever met in my life. A long time ago, he was a friend. I don't talk much about the years I spent abroad honing the craft of crime fighting. The road that ended with Batman, but that's the start of the road. I was just like any young man. As we get several panels of Batman learning everything there was to learn, every skill and every trade that might be useful. As he tells Dick, it was a lonely road until I met a young man. He had been making his way around the world like I had done. He wanted to be the world's greatest crime fighter. His ego was unbearable, but I never met another person who thought like I did. We became good friends. But when I told him about the night my parents died, told him about the oath, about my mission, he told me I was weak. He became so mad, he tried to kill me. He was so angry because he thought he had found somebody like him. Somebody who was doing this for the art of it, not for some childish idea of vengeance. Over the years, he would find me and try to prove that he was the better student and that he would become the better crime fighter. I saw him again at the end of our journey and I told him he wasn't welcome to Gotham City. He said I wasn't welcome to anywhere he set up camp. We agreed, so this time he'll get the bad guy and then send him home. Dick just pauses for a second, not knowing what to say before telling Bruce, you know you're not weak, right? I don't have to tell you that. I mean, you're Batman. Bruce just replies, I don't feel weak. And Dick asks, but you miss your friend? Bruce pauses before saying, yes. We are then brought back to the present where we see Dick telling this to Oracle and she just says, whoa, 
He tells her, yeah, it was something else. I know Bruce reached out to him for Batman Inc. a while back. He wanted him to help run the program. It didn't go well. Barbara then tells Dick most of the world intelligence circles still think he's an urban legend, but there are a few classified reports I read of run-ins between him and the Great Ten in China. Anyway, after this, Stephanie Brown, aka Spoiler, or now Batgirl, radios into Oracle saying, we're at the spot Batman, Harley, and the Kid Clown Hunter were taken. But I think we have a pretty good idea where he took them. Oracle asks how, and Cassandra Kane says, the plant told us. As we see that the poison ivy plant Harley was talking to in the last issue spelled out Arkham on the wall, meaning poison ivy is still alive and actually could hear Harley when she was talking to her. We are then taken back to the abandoned Arkham room with Batman, Harley, and Clown Hunter. The Clown Hunter then realizes he's the only one not strapped to the table, so he gets up and gives Harley a mean look. Harley then says, what the hell is your problem, kid? I haven't run with the Joker crew in years. You can't pin all this crap on me. Batman then sits up saying, Harley, you were there the night Joker killed his parents. At which point she's like, ah, crap. Clown Hunter then sees a sword laying on a table, which he picks up saying, I always wanted one of these. While Batman says, don't do this. But he just walks over to Harley, putting the sword on her throat saying, sorry, Batman. I've been waiting for this chance for a long, long time, and I'm gonna make it hurt. This leads us to issue 105, the third and final issue we're gonna be talking about today. Yes, I know, issue 106 is currently out, but we're leaving that for a different episode, as that's the start of a completely new storyline. Issue 105 picks up in Argentina years ago with Bruce about to get on a private jet. But as he's about to walk on the plane, he's stopped by the Ghostmaker who says to him, you're done with your training. You're going back to Gotham City. Bruce just tells him, it's time. Ghostmaker then says, you're not ready. You don't understand what we're doing, what we've built our ourselves into these past years. Bruce is essentially like, not this again. Ghostmaker then says, we're both crazy. Bruce says, I'm not the psychopath. Ghostmaker then tells him, that's why you're gonna die. Probably within the first six months of your war on crime. Ghostmaker then goes on to say, Bruce, we used to stay up late and talk about just how broken the world was and come up with idea after idea for how to make it better. Not for glory or personal gain, but for the sake of the task itself. For the sheer art of it, damn it. Making the world better because we were the only ones smart enough to gather the skills to do so. To take each new challenge eagerly and learn what was necessary to overcome it. Bruce then asks, why don't you think I could do that? Ghostmaker tells him, because you're trying to fulfill the promise of an eight-year-old boy. You're trying to stop a crime that's already been committed. You can't save yourself as a boy, no matter how much you've trained, no matter how many skills you've learned. Bruce then tells him, I'm sick of you telling me what I can't do. Ghostmaker then proposes a plan to him, saying, let go of the guilt of your parents. Let go of Gotham. Let go of the idea of Bruce Wayne. You and me can systematically dismantle the world's criminal underground. City by city, country by country. We can live well off the coffers of the gangs we dismantle. And we can expand from there. And in time, maybe we'll even tackle Gotham City. Bruce, of course, still says no, which pisses Ghostmaker off, so he punches Bruce across the face. At which point, Bruce says, if you set foot in my city, I'll treat you like any other lawbreaker I find in my way. Ghostmaker tells him, I have no interest in that sewer you call home, but fine, that's our deal. I won't step foot in your city, and you won't set foot in any that I set up camp in. At which point, Bruce goes, good, now get out of my way. I never want to see you again, as he hops on the plane. Meanwhile, back in Gotham, Clown Hunter is about to chop Harley Quinn's head off, but Batman says, you're being played. You're just a pawn in Ghostmaker's plans. If you kill her, he's gonna come in here and kill you. Clown Hunter replies saying, you don't care about me, but Batman tells him, yes, yes I do. I know your pain. I know how much you wanna make things right, but this is the wrong way to do it. Clown Hunter replies, maybe I don't care, while raising the sword, at which point Batman gets so pissed off, he's able to break his restraints. At which point he tosses a battering to Harley so she could cut herself free before her head gets chopped off. After this, Batman takes the sword from Clown Hunter, at which point Harley starts talking to Clown Hunter. She says, I've done some bad stuff in the past, but I'm trying to make up for it, and I'm sorry your parents died, and I'm sorry I had any kind of hand in it. I'm also sorry that that got so deep in your head it messed you up, and now you're out here ruining your life just to try to make things make sense. But you've got your whole life ahead of you. There's consequences to doing things that just make you feel strong. I got really messed up for a while there. Nothing in my life felt like it made any sense. The Joker got into my head and made me believe we were the same. I wanted to be strong, but he was able to manipulate me and control me and make me feel loved enough that I was willing to help him do really terrible things. Because I wanted to feel strong. I wanted to be the one with the power. I wanted to be the one people were afraid of. And now I have to deal with the consequences of that for the rest of my life. I'm always gonna be Harley Quinn, and I'm gonna make the best of it. I'm gonna try to save as many people as I tried to hurt back in the day. I wanna be a better version of me, but if you wanna kill me, you can. I deserve it. At which point, Clown Hunter raises a knife in the air, screaming in anger, but instead of driving it into Harley, he stabs the table, walking away, saying, leave me alone, just leave me alone. Now at this point, Ghostmaker failed to make his point with Clown Hunter, so of course him and Batman start fighting again. Towards the end, Batman drops the sword saying, I don't wanna fight you, we've been fighting too long. It also seems like Ghostmaker is done trying to make his point as well, as every time he's tried to make one, it didn't work. And it seems like Clown Hunter not killing Harley Quinn was the last straw. So he says, fine, we don't have to fight. 
I'll leave Gotham in the morning. We'll stick to the old arrangement. Batman then tells him, don't leave Gotham, stay. Help me make it better. Ghostmaker asks, why? Batman then says, because I'm getting older and Gotham City is getting younger. I don't have the resources I used to have or the allies within law enforcement and the city government. I could use the help. Ghostmaker says, I'm not gonna stop telling you what you're doing wrong. Batman says, good. Since Alfred passed, I don't have enough of that in my life. Ghostmaker also says, I'm not wearing a bat on my chest. Bruce tells him, I wouldn't ask you to. My only rule is, don't kill in my city. It makes the job much harder, but I guess I understand if you're not willing to risk failing. Ghostmaker then says, Ah, so that's how it is. Batman then asks, are you up for the challenge? Ghostmaker tells him, I guess I am. And with that, the two head off to a hijacking at Gotham Symphony Orchestra. And just like that, we have the origin and backstory of the Ghostmaker, a new ally for Batman. I say it all the time, but I love when writers create new characters and tie them to a character's mythos in such a way that it seems like they've always been there, we just haven't heard of them yet. The funny thing is, we still don't know the Ghostmaker's real name. Like, Batman began to say it in issue 105, but Ghostmaker cut him off. So the only thing we know is his name starts with the letters K and H. Anyway, I'm digging this new Ghostmaker character. I love the fact that there was someone else like Bruce learning every form of martial arts and traveling the world. But not for vengeance, just for the sheer art of it. I love that dynamic. It's almost like a Bruce without the tragedy. What I'm saying is, this is another a story and character by James Tynan for the Batman universe. Don't worry, we'll cover the brand new story arc that starts in issue 106 in coming weeks here on the channel. But other than that, let us know what you think of Ghostmaker and the entirety of James Tynan's Batman run down in the comments. First up for the week of the 30th, we have The Flash issue 768. After the events spanning from DC Universe, Rebirth to Heroes in Crisis, to Dark Knight's Death Metal, the former Kid Flash decides to call it quits. But the current Flash needs his former partner now more than ever. Now we have Symbiote Spider-Man King in Black issue 5. The God King of the Symbiotes has made his presence known across space and time. Will the assembled heroes of Marvel's yesteryear be enough to save the world from darkness? Here we have Spawn issue 316. This issue continues to follow the team of She-Spawn, Gunslinger Spawn, Medieval Spawn, and Reaper. It's definitely a fun book. And finally, we have Batman Catwoman issue 4. The Joker has hidden a bomb in Gotham City, but there might be a bigger explosion if Batman proves his suspicions true, and Catwoman actually knows where it is. And just like that, that's going to do it for another episode of Rant. But if you like today's episode, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. It always helps out the channel. But I will see your lovely faces next time when I talk about all things comics.